Okay, so welcome back to the Coggeshall United kickoff. My name is Gareth and I'm the media director of Coggeshall United. Beside me is Andrew, the club president. Andrew? It's great to be here with Gareth again today to talk about a couple of the issues that have been going on in the Premiership and the Championship uh, in the past week. Two very interesting issues with the uh, injury to Harry Kane for Spurs that apparently is going to put him out till March and the Spygate issue with Marcelo Bielsa at Leeds and the spying on Derby County's training regimen in the past week or so. Um, also, we're going to talk a little bit about the game today for Cox United against Burnham Ramblers, 9th versus 13th. Um, we're very excited about the game. We're very excited about the issues. Over to Gareth to just start us off. Yeah, so uh, as you guys are probably well aware, Harry Kane has picked up an injury. Now, this injury was sustained after the Manchester United game, where Manchester United beat Tottenham 1-0 at uh, Wembley. It was actually a week, to go, a week ago today or Sunday, this weekend anyway, so I will get it right. Uh, so basically, he was fine throughout the game. He actually had, a, would say, a rather decent game. He just didn't, couldn't finish. But at the end of the game, there was a bit of a tackle where eyes raised because uh, he, you know, he was fouled but it was at the very dying end of the game Mike Dean just blew up and it was over however at the end of the game he could not walk off um, since then there have been scans on his leg and it turns out he has actually damaged his ACL wasn't it some of his ligaments yes, in yeah. his leg and he is going to be out till March so Andrew what are your thoughts on this I think it's a huge miss for Spurs going into a very important stage of the season they are considered to be title challengers although they are in third place um I think it's a bigger miss because they're missing Son, because Son for me is a very underrated player mm -hmm. for Spurs, very. Uh, very important. To be missing him as well means they are relying on someone who, with the utmost respect to him, is 33 years old, does not get many opportunities to play. Of course, he did score a hat-trick against Tramir Rovers, and that's Fernando Llorente. Also, um, a player, the forgotten man, arguably, of Spurs, mm. Vincent, ja Vincent Janssen, is now uh, potentially going to get some game time, having just gone through an under-23 game for Spurs. Probably many Spurs fans forgot they even had him, possibly even before he'd even left the club. Yeah. Um, I think I would be very surprised if Spurs are able to maintain their form prior to losing Kane in the weeks ahead without him. Um, I think it puts a lot of pressure on Pochettino. I think it does put a lot of pressure on the players that are left to step up. Potentially, one of the rumours that I have heard is that Deli Ali may even be played in a false nine role. What do you think of that, Gareth? I think that's interesting because I think Deli Ali, and watching him against Manchester, and obviously watching him at the World Cup, even obviously they're two different sides, England and Tottenham. However, if you look at a player and you look at his stats, really, I think he could play really well in the false nine. I reckon this could be the making of him. What he's 20, 23, 24? Yeah. So this this is a time when he really wants to sort of switch his positions. I mean, you look at Gareth Bale, who's a very good example of switching positions. He was a left back when he started at Southampton. Now he's one of the best right wingers and left wingers in the world. So really, I mean, you can switch position, especially at his age, 24, 23. You've still got a lot of time to be able to consolidate that position. I really think a false nine could really suit him. I mean, the good thing about Spurs to not denigrate on any of their other players because it's not as if they're a one-man team. You're talking about Lucas Moura, you're talking about Christian Eriksen, you're talking about um, Mr. Suzoko. You're talking about really good players that do offer a threat going forward. I just think Harry Kane has developed himself into something of a talisman for Spurs and for England, of course, to the point where you're talking about Roy of the Rovers in pretty much even with the way he's actually come through and the way he has established himself for both club and country. I don't know if they're going to make a signing. I mean, it shocks me in the summer, and I'm sure it did for you too, Gareth, yeah. that they were the only club not to bother actually making a signing. I think you've got to ask the question is, did they need a signing, though? So, But even the, even the teams that win the league usually like to freshen up. Well, of course. No, absolutely. I think... The thing is with Tottenham is they're in a very they're in a transition period. As a club, not as a team. I mean, yeah. that's what Manchester United are. They're in a transition. But as a club... They are in a transition period because you look, they've got a new stadium getting built. They've got things going on behind the scenes. They're revamping their academy system. They've got new players coming up through the ranks. Harry Winks also looked incredibly good, might I just say to add. So, yeah, it's, it's very, very difficult. But I think it will be a challenge for them. Um, but no, what, what are you going to say, Andrew? I would say it's, it's an interesting time for Spurs, like you've just said. Mm. I think it's also a little bit of an embarrassing time for Spurs, yeah. in all honesty with regard to the stadium issue, considering they um, keep saying that they're going to be in the stadium on a particular date, back at White Hart Lane, no, that date then gets pushed back. And then so they're going to be on it that date, no, it then gets pushed back. I think Spurs, as you say, are in a period of transition. It will be interesting to see what the rest of the season brings. Um, I 
I think Spurs are a very good side. I think Pochettino is a very good manager. I think this is an interesting test, both for the team and for the coach. And I, for one, am very excited to see what it actually will Absolutely. bring. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah, it'll be very, very interesting to see if he goes to Manchester United in the summer. So, hopefully. Um, our next topic is going to be about the Italian manager. Um, what's his name again? I keep on forgetting his name. He's, um, he's actually Argentinian. Argentinian, of course. And his name is Marcelo Bielsa, <laughs> and he's at Leeds United. He's yep. been an interesting breath of fresh air. I mean, this is a man who, rather than sit on the bench, will sit on a big blue bucket because he reckons that it would actually give him a better view of the pitch. Really? Yes, 100%. That's quite an interesting thing. So, obviously, anyone at home who, who, who doesn't really know, this Bielsa has actually um, stirred a lot of... Uh, ruffled a few feathers in the English game. Now, it's his first job in the English game, if I'm not mistaken. First job in the English yep. game. So, if you look, uh, if you have a look at what he's done, he has essentially been spying on the other teams. Now, if, rule book wise, the FA, there is no rules uh, saying you can't do this at all. Um, however, there is a big however here, it is ethically wrong. Now, Andrew has a different opinion. I've been talking to you about that, haven't I? And yes, Andrew yeah. seems to think there's nothing wrong with it. But uh, yeah, not I, mean, sure. I mean, my view is there's nothing wrong with it because. The, the fact of the matter is you have open training sessions where I think you almost invite other teams to send their staff to come and see how you actually play, to see what you're actually planning, to see who's fit, to see who isn't, to see who's training, to see who, is, to, who isn't. Hmm. I think that um, English over here we seem to have this view that we're white and white. I don't think we are. I think coaches that are already over here, English coaches, foreign coaches, whatever, I think they're already doing this. I think they are just, it's just a, it's a, um, it's just an issue that's been overblown to me. I think you take any advantage you can get. If there's an opportunity to watch another team play, I think you take it. The only, it, the only matter that I have a problem with, with what Bielsa's staff members are alleged to have done is he was alleged to have been found with wire cutters, but this is just an allegation. I think if you are able to view over the top of a fence, or if you're actually able to get into the ground to watch, I think you take that opportunity. Obviously, there's a sight of legality here, isn't there? In, in a way that, yeah. not football rules, but actual legal rules. Now, as with any football club who is not, who is actually registered as a charter club by the FA, it is what they call private property. Now, anyone who is not from the UK, um, trespassing rules and various different pieces. Now, Leeds Football Club, uh, not Leeds, sorry, Derby County Football Club is a private property, including their trading ground. So, well, I think what we need to look at, and we'll bring you more news on this when we have it, really, yeah. is was he trespassing or not? Does, does, does that come into it? Because if he was trying to access the ground but did not get access to it, and if Bielsa has said this has happened all season, there's got to be some investigation by the clubs in the Premier uh, in the Championship that they've already played and thought, well, hang on a minute, what's gone on here? Have we been trespassed? Is there any damage to any of our fences, vice versa? Yeah, I think, I think, if, there was, I think if there was people going around damaging fences, I think we would have already heard about it mm. because they're, they're over halfway through the season. Yeah, I true. think it is people taking advantage. For example, as we look at the ground where we are now, if Coggeshall Town are training on here, if Coggeshall Town were training on the football pitch, it would be very difficult for anyone to actually see because we've got fencing around here that is about probably about seven or eight foot high in places. You, you wouldn't get anywhere near to the ground at yeah, all. Yeah, and then you'd, you'd actually have to break him from you. Yeah, you'd, yeah. You'd, although saying that, to, to um, uh, give it a bit of, little more weight to my point, um, outside the ground where we are currently, there is actually a public footpath. So outside the ground, it is a public ac access point. So you are actually able to go right up to the fence and look over if you wanted to. Yeah. I think if that is an opp if that opportunity is there, you would be stupid not to take it. Of course, no, I, 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 I can understand that. I think from obviously, me and Andrew come from two different generations. I think, I think that's it, isn't it? You, you're, yeah, I, I'm in, the, I'm in the thought that sportsmanship. You've all got to be sportsmanship, and obviously, you grew up with, I, I guess, the the, the, the hooligans of, of the day. You know, honestly, <laughs> various yes. bits and pieces. And uh, Gareth has now just added about ten years to my age. We'll leave that, we'll leave that to yes. one side. Um, <laughs> so our next topic, moving on swiftly, before I get a punch. You don't know our brand uh, we play actually a match in the week and this was on Wednesday weren't it yeah. against Benfleet now this was actually a knockout cup match everyone in the league plays a game um, don't they with, with with other people in the league yeah. and yeah it's another opportunity to win a trophy basically yeah essentially yeah yeah so how do you think we did Andrew in that match um, I've spoken to Cliff about it since um, apparently the boys started slowly and yet took the lead 1-0 um, unfortunately um, 
our goalkeeper made a couple of mistakes that um, helped Benfleet to build up a healthy lead going into the midway point of the second half. Uh, they were three one up at one stage. Um, oddly enough, though, the boys pulled together for the goalkeeper, arguably and for themselves, and were able to get it back to three all. Uh, there is a feeling. Cliff has expressed it, a few other people that were at the game who have since told me about their feelings about what was going on, that if there had been extra time, we had the potential to go on and win the game without having to go to penalties. Unfortunately, the FA rules state that at the end of the 90, you have to go to penalties. For whatever reason, I don't know, but you have to go to penalties. If that had gone in our favour, I think we'd all be lauding it. But unfortunately, we got into sudden death and there was a miss. Only miss of the game, only miss of the penalty shootout, and unfortunately we lost seven six. Yeah, it's been an unfortunate game. I think after our win against Newbury Forest, where that we won, which our was last very game, convincing. Well, it was very nil. convincing three 0 win. Now to come back to this is very very disappointing. Um, but going on to today's game, we are playing Burnham Ramblers at home. It's actually just started to rain. Um, I think it will be start snowing at some point today. Who knows? But hopefully we're looking into a good game. Me and Andrew will be doing live commentary. Um, you'll see that in a separate video coming up probably in the week, depending on when I can be bothered to edit it, basically. <laughs> um, yeah, so that'll be coming up soon. And hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll have a really cool game today for you guys to be able to see on the highlights. Because the last few games, I have to say, um, we haven't been doing it as well in terms of goals. So, fingers crossed. It's a goal-laden game today. It's a goal-laden game today. Any last words, Andrew? Um, just to say, um, thank you for watching. And if you'd like to find out more about the club, please come on to www.cogsunitedfc.co.uk. Uh, please also look for us on Twitter, on Facebook, and on YouTube. And twitch.tv, I'm the Twitch. football manager on there. The hashtag challenge, www.fm19.store forward slash hashtag. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Have a good day.